We will start the press conference by Minister Motegi. Starting from today, we will live stream this press conference on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs official Twitter account. In addition to live streaming on Japanese language account, we will also live stream simultaneous interpretation on our English account. We'll also be live streaming my regular press conference in English too. As novel coronavirus spreads, we are urging people to stay at home and work from home. As such, we at the MOFAS Press Club, the reporters are making efforts to contain the spread of the coronavirus by working differently. Against this backdrop, we are able to invite reporters who are not here in person and also people in Japan and in the world will be able to watch press briefings real time. Using digital technologies, I want to thoroughly explain Japan's foreign policy and initiatives and efforts of the MOFA going forward. I hope that many people will listen in and watch the briefings real time. Hey, please check uh, Foreign Ministry's English Twitter account in my uh, press conference. Now, let me give you updates on the uh, COVID-19 outbreak as of today. The number of infections in the world is about 2.1 million. The number of deaths in the world is 140,000. The number of infections in Japan, 9,167. The number of deaths in Japan, 148. So we are facing a very severe situation in Japan. We continue to face a very dire situation, but uh, fatalities per 100,000 in Japan is 0 0.12. So by international comparison, as of now, we have been able to contain such number at the low level. The government of Japan continues to work as one to prevent the spread of uh, COVID-19 in Japan and to ensure safety and security of Japanese nationals abroad. From this perspective, I would like to add the following. Since last month, due to restrictions on international flights, we have seen more cases in which Japanese people abroad are not able to leave their countries and come back home. The protection of nationals, Japanese nationals, is one of the most important responsibilities of the MOFA. So at this ministry, centering around myself, Consular Affairs Bureau, Regional Bureau, and uh, related diplomatic missions abroad are working as one to collect concrete information and share the information with Japanese nationals abroad as needed. So we are making efforts to secure means of repatriation and providing thorough uh, support to them. As a result, so far we have repatriated about 7,100 from the countries with difficulties of leaving, departing, and uh, those who are wishing to leave as of now is about 1,300. Of 1,300, by the end of this week, it is likely that about 300 will be able to come back to Japan. This number includes the Japanese nationals who will assembling through 10 routes from different places of Africa and assemble in Ethiopia and take flights tomorrow on the 18th uh, from Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia, to come back to Narita International Airport. And by the end of this month, it is likely that about 300 uh, will be able to come back in addition to the numbers I uh, mentioned earlier. These numbers are constantly changing, but the MOFA will continue to provide solid support to those who want to come back in consideration of various situations. And also, we have to gather information regarding the uh, status of means of transportation in the countries where they are staying, and we are going to provide thorough assistance to them. That is all.
please raise your hand and uh, please come to the standing microphone in the front and identify yourself and affiliation when you are designated. Sushiro san. I am from Indonesia. The microphone is not on. On the 7th of this month, you made an announcement regarding the Avigan to 30 countries. You are going to deliver Avigan going forward. On the 14th of April, where ASEAN Plus 3 Special Leader Summit was held, it was mentioned that, uh, that Japan is going to deliver Avigan to these countries. And uh, a week after this, what kind of procedures have been taken, and particularly to Indonesia? Uh, when are you going to uh, make the delivery to Indonesia? Please mention the time frame for that. Yes, first, uh, that's me talking in general about supplying Avigan. On the 14th, the ASEAN Plus 3 special leaders video conference was held and from uh, some leaders uh, there were reference about Africa and Prime Minister Abe explained about expanding the clinical test, clinical trial of Africa and it was agreed about the importance of early development of a therapeutic drug uh, to fight against this virus. And before that, on the 7th of April, in Japan, from a humanitarian perspective, to for countries that wish to have Avigan, to be able to supply Avigan for free, we decided a $1 million emergency grant aid to provide Avigan. On the following day, on the 8th of April, the procurement agency, United Nations Office for Project Services, UNOPS, and Japanese government signed an agreement. So the work of procurement and supply has already started. For other countries where procedures are completed, we plan to provide supplies. As for the countries which Avigan will be provided, and we would like to announce that after the drug is supplied, including the timing of the supply. So far, we have received requests to supply from more than 50 countries, and already for 20 countries, Within a certain framework, we already concluded coordinations to provide for free. And for Indonesia, Indonesia is included in the 20 countries which we have completed coordination. The microphone is not on. The microphone is not on. The microphone is not on. The interpreter cannot hear. After COVID-19 started, I think this is the first case of cooperation between Japan and South Korea. So I'd like to think about your thoughts about this cooperation. We are in a serious situation to overcome this situation. About Japan South Korea cooperation, what are the plans of Japan to promote cooperation? The other day, uh, Japan, China, and Korea had a foreign minister's video conference. In that meeting, uh, Foreign Minister Kang Kyung fa and uh, uh, Minister Wang Yi and I myself discussed. how we can respond to COVID-19. For that purpose, not only domestically, but also internationally, we have to enhance cooperation. That was the agreement we reached. Particularly, the uh, medical service delivery system is sometimes fragile in countries in Africa and in other developing countries. The assistance uh, to these countries require uh, cooperation as well. And also coordination with international organization is extremely important for this purpose. That is my view. So against this backdrop, Japan, South Korea, and China and also, uh, broadly, European countries and the U.S., we want to seek cooperation with the various countries in order to provide assistance. The other day, there was a G7 and G20 
leaders uh, video conferences and they confirmed the importance of this uh, cooperation. So we would like to expand a very good track record one by one and, and make a contribution. Thank you. Morisada-san. Hokkaido newspaper, Morisada, I have a question regarding the relationship between Japan and Russia. President Putin yesterday uh, postponed the uh, May 9th uh, ceremony to mark that 75th anniversary of the Soviet victory over Nazi Germany, and Prime Minister Abe was planning to attend. Uh, did you receive any official notice from the Russian side? And also, uh, if Prime Minister is once again invited to the new ceremony, then the government wants to send Prime Minister? Well, the ceremony postponement was announced. I'm aware of that. Because COVID-19 infection is expanding broadly uh, globally in the current situation, this, I understand, is a judgment taking into consideration, giving priority to the health and safety of our participants to this event from both uh, within Russia and overseas. As for the ceremony, this is not a suspension, but I understand it is a postponement. The date that this will be postponed is not being decided. I think there will be further coordination going forward. The next question, please. Oh, yes, son, please. Oh, yeah, from uh, Yomiuri Shimbu. As you mentioned at the outset, the press conference will be streamed in English based on the COVID-19, I understand. But after the COVID-19 uh, is over, English streaming will continue going forward? I know. Perhaps a novel uh, coronavirus infectious disease and uh, after human beings uh, beat COVID-19. After that, as was mentioned earlier in the question, and I said, in various ways, we recognize and reconfirm the uh, need for international coordination cooperation. And in the risk respect, we can say that this provided opportunity to confirm that. And uh, we are promoting teleworking and also remote education and remote um, medical services. I think it is important to promote such practices, and in order to implement that, various attempts are now being made. So far, the teleworking has not taken root yet, and perhaps uh, people had uh, some doubt for the possibility. However, we are now working from home, and we are going through trials and errors, but I think it is being promoted. So if we have a will, it can be done. So we are now living in the era of digital transformation. So in this uh, context, we should utilize new digital technologies in our communication as well. We have to strengthen that. And once we start this, we don't stop. Any other questions? Sato-san. Asahi newspaper, Sato. Yesterday, G7 Leaders Summit took place, and according to the White House, the leaders of G7 discussed uh, the, 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 the requested the thorough uh, investigation and reform of WHO. What is the official stance of Japan regarding WHO? In the conference, the Prime Minister Abe referred to this case infections that greatly affects the world and that centered on WHO the whole world should cooperate to take measures against such infections and going forward to be prepared against a similar situation happening in the future function of WHO should be fully verified uh, Prime Minister uh, Abe understand made that statement the next question please Kato -san. Kato from uh, Nikkei newspaper about diplomacy with Russia. So there was postponement of a ceremony of victory and uh, 
uh, the visit of Minister Lavrov, and also there was exchange without visa. But I think some diplomacy with Russia is stagnant. How is the current situation affecting the relationship? Foreign Minister Lavrov, with him, the negotiation for the peace treaty is to be promoted, and that direction is completely agreed upon and shared between me and him. Also, the uh, negotiation for peace treaty between Japan and Russia, but not only that, related to uh, COVID-19, uh, there is a restriction on travel and movement. Not only Japan, but also various other countries are discussing. However, such discussions are being postponed because of COVID-19 radio restrictions. So we have to make efforts, firstly, to control the situation, bring the situation under control as soon as possible. And based on that, the discussion with minister, Foreign Minister Lavlov and Deputy Ministerial level uh, consultations would start in view of the uh, situation of the outbreak, and we would like to uh, f confirm the situation and create the thorough results. Any other questions? No? Thank you very much. This concludes the press conference. Thank you.